In this video presentation, we're going to discuss how to transfer data from Industry 4.0 data sources to other Industry 4.0 data sources and to IoT cloud systems using the multiple tag write feature that is configurable using the Configure OAS application programmatically through the REST API or programmatically through a .NET application. There are three ways that we can use the data route feature, and they can be reviewed under the knowledge base at Open Automation Software. Under Data Destinations, we have Data Route. And if we look at the Getting Started Data Route section, there we'll see the three descriptions of each of the methods described. And so we've got the tag to tag data transfer, which you might be familiar with, of using the source tag of an OES tag and using the target tab of a tag to write to another tag. There's also the IoT publish feature that works with Azure, AWS, MQTT, and Kafka to publish data using the driver interface built into OES. But if we're going to review the multiple tag transfer feature that is that can be triggered based upon an event based upon a data change, or it can be executed continuously. Uh, we're going to follow these steps uh, in the guide here to set up an example of setting some values using this multiple tag write feature. The features I'm going to demonstrate for you do require a license of the data route feature. You can check your existing system, if you already have OES installed, under Configure License. And there you'll see at the very bottom left uh, the enabled products. And you want to see that you have data route uh, enabled. That's this one right here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll start the configure application and we'll manually set up the configure of a data route. So if we go to configure data route, here is where we would define the multiple tag data route feature. And we would just give it a test name uh, or a route name. Here I'm going to just call it route one. And with the route type, we can set that to be event driven based upon a Boolean tag or integer tag that transitions that's non zero. If it's a Boolean tag, then we're going to determine to check if it's a transition from false to true, true to false, or both. If it is continuous, you would specify the rate at which you want to execute the route. We can also do a specific time of day. Or if we do destination change as the route type, what this means is if the destination tag value, that individual tag, if it changes value, then we are going to execute the write for just that destination tag of whatever we have defined the uh, value we want to write to it. If we specify source change, this will trigger the write to the destination tag anytime that the source tag defined to that destination tag uh, changes. So let's change the route type back to event driven. And I'm going to browse for a tag that I already have in the system called trigger. And I'm just going to use the value variable of that tag. But you can use any Boolean variable of any local or remote tag. Notice it will support networking as well to either trigger or even the values that you want to write to or read the values from. They can be from coming from remote OES engines, provided that you do have an active network connection to those remote OES engines. So now that we have determined how we're going to trigger the data route, the next thing we would do is to use the Tags tab. And here in the Tags tab, we're going to actually define what are we going to write to and what is going to be the source of the value that we want to pass along. And so here I have some example tags called uh, Destination. And I've preset these double float tags up. I have value one, 
value 2 and value 3 defined. And just to see it, a quick example of writing a static value, I'm going to set the source value for this first tag to be 1 with no time delay. Uh, we're going to review that in just a second. That's going to be a nice feature to do either simulated sequencing or also time on and time off of uh, some Boolean tags if we want to. So when we're doing the static source tag, we do need to define what would be the data type of the value that we're going to write. So what we're going to do is we're going to typecast this string, which is currently one, into a double float when we write it onto the destination tag. Let's set up a few more tags. We'll do value two with a value of two and value three with a value of three. Notice that you can also do a CSV export and import if you want to. That's listed in the knowledge base as well. Very simply uh, to export these values to a CSV file and then you can modify the rest of your routing configuration. You can put in thousands of tags, as many as you'd like per routing condition and then save that to a CSV file, close Excel, and then use the CSV import button. You can also have as many different route ver uh, conditions that you want. Here we're just defining one, but you can have thousands uh, of route conditions running in a single OAS engine if you like. All right, now that we have this defined, what we'll do is we'll select add group and that is going to make the route active. What we're waiting for now is a transition of the trigger tag from false to true to do that route. So let's go to configure tags and let's take a look at the current value of those tags. So under the destination, what we'll do is we'll use the watch window. That's going to be handy to see what the current value of each of these tags are. So they're currently zero, all zero. And now if I go to the trigger tag, what I'll do with the trigger tag is I'll transition it to true. And there we will see the current values of each of the destination is now the, the static values that I defined. That is one, two, and three. Now, if those destination tags were defined to an industry 4.0 data source like uh, Modbus, Allen Bradley, Siemens, the values would be written on down to the controller. So this is a cool feature, can even be used for handshaking between uh, controllers or communications if you'd like. So that's to set static values based upon a trigger. Now let's see how we can set dynamic values based upon a trigger or a data route condition. So if we go back to the data route one and go back to the tags tab, let's edit the first one here. And instead of using a static value, I'll specify to bring in the value from a tag. And now I can browse for a local or remote tag that I want to. Um, what I'm going to do here is use a dynamic tag. Let's use the ramp value for value one and I'll click OK and for value two I'm going to browse for another tag. Let's browse for ramp two and for value three Let's browse for the sign tag. Okay, and I'll apply changes. Now we're ready for another trigger. So we'll go back to the tags tab. And we'll transition, we'll change that value back to false. And now we're going to transition it to true. And there we see we have basically written the values from the source tags that would be ramp, ramp to, and sign at that time written onto the destination tags 
at that time. Now into the data route configuration, we can also make this continuous. That way we can make it hands-free. And so if we do continuous, we can see that what we'll be writing the current values from our source tags onto the destination tags. So let's select add to watch for ramp. And there we see the ramp value as it's changing and we're triggering to execute at the frequency of one second. Now we can speed that up to be say 0.1 seconds and then we'll be writing it faster and then we'll see that the uh, value 2 is going quite fast because that sign value is changing quite quickly as well. The ramp condition doesn't change as often but we can change that as well. Let's change the simulation rate on ramp to point one as well then we'll speed things up there and if we add to watch the sign tag there we can see each of the destinations is kept in sync with the source values because we're doing a continuous write at this frequency let's change it back to uh, a source change now on source change what that's going to do is any time that the source value that we have defined changes it will immediately write it to the destination tag same as what we had with continuous but really it's a little bit better in this regard that it is done immediately as soon as that source changes not at a specific rate, but just as soon as we receive that value coming in from the source, it's written on to the destination. All right. Let's take a look at some other features that uh, possibilities of sequencing that we might want to do with a time delay. So let's leave these uh, tags up in the configuration and I'll go back to my data route configuration. And what I'm going to do now is go back to the uh, route type and I'll set that back to event driven to be based upon that trigger tag. So there we see the, the updates for the destinations have now stopped waiting for that trigger. Here I want to show uh, a time delay and this can be used either with a source from a tag or a fixed value. Just to demonstrate the point, I'm going to change the, it back to a fixed value of source 1. And I'm going to use a time delay of, say, 2 seconds on the first one. And then on the second one, I'll use a time delay of 4 seconds. Now, you could be writing to the same tag as well. Uh, let's actually do this. This will be quite interesting, is we'll change this to the value of 2 and change this to just to write to destination 1 with a time delay of 4 and then the last one will write to that same destination value 1 a static value of 3 with a time delay of 6 seconds and let's apply those changes go ahead and initialize the value 1 to 0 in our sequencing and let's take a look at the trigger again so we're going to transition it back to true so when we apply changes we wait two seconds and then we see the value one another two seconds the value two and the final two seconds a value of three so that was the sequencing so you can see you can use this data route feature to emulate um, process conditions uh, things if you if you'd like to do it that way there's one other feature that's quite handy with the data route feature that we have and that is to use a time on or time off condition and so we've been asked many times how do you reset a boolean tag with a time delay well we have that feature built in to the configure application of a boolean tag let me just show it to you so if we look at this trigger tag, one of the variables here is called reset to false. And there you can put in a time delay. And so it could be coming from a PLC or controller. 
it turns the bit on the, coming from the controller and then after this time delay it will reset it back to false. But what about if we wanted to do a time off condition? Well that can be used now with the state route feature. And so let me set up a second route here. What I'll do is I'll just hit the select button to clear my configuration. And uh, one thing to note here, we have the ability to enable or disable the routes based upon this activate route with a tag. And so if we select this option, we can then browse for a Boolean tag that will turn the route on or off which is different than the event itself, but basically if the boolean for activate is false, it will never execute. And then if it's true, it'll then execute based upon our route state or our route type. So let's make this also event driven. We could base upon that same boolean tag if we'd like. Well, actually let's make it a bit different. Let's do the route type of destination change. So what we're going to be looking for now is the destination tag that we define itself. Let's actually just use the trigger tag if we'd like. So if we look at trigger value, what we're going to do here is based upon this Boolean condition, is we're going to reset the value back to false. I can use either use zero or false. And what we can do is a time delay. Let's say make that say five seconds. Okay. And then we'll just call this route type time off. And we'll add that to the configuration. Now if I go to the tags and look at the trigger tag, its current value was already true and then it flashed now to false. I don't know if you saw it there. Let me do it one more time for you so you can see it. And so, yep, yeah, we are currently at a false value. We apply changes to true. Now after five seconds or our time delay, it will be written back as false. And again, if that data source was to a controller, say to a Siemens uh, Boolean variable or Allen Bradley variable, maybe a Modbus coil status, it would write that value to the controller itself. Okay, well, as I've been doing the data route configuration, you'll see this prompt quite often it says, save values to a file. What we would do is select save from the toolbar and there we would specify a file name to save to in a particular path. And then if we, let me just call this test data route configuration and we click save and then it prompts us additionally, do we want to make this the default configuration when the system starts up? And I would say yes. And what that does is now when the OES engine restarts, it'll load this data route configuration that I have specified here. Here it is under the default files of configure options. It is automatically set that path to where we have there. If you have any questions about this feature or if you've got some other application examples or types that would be applicable for the data route, we'd like to hear about those. Um, so definitely contact us. Under support, we have contact us and there you can email us directly at support at oesiot.com or you can reach us under this contact us page, fill out your contact information and click the submit button.